today we're going to be doing some research and development on this custom cast iron smelting burner. This thing has some very special features that make it extremely reliable when it comes to burning waste oil. You ain't got to worry about no clogs on this thing. You don't even have to filter the oil in most cases. Hey, what's up, fellas? We're back out here at White Sands Proving Grounds. We're doing a little preliminary test today for Jeremy. This is a special type of burner that has a dual air system. We're gonna be using a blower and compressed air on this particular setup. This is gonna be a casting burner. I don't have the air cowlings in yet, so we're just doing this temporary. It's actually gonna have a spool tube set up that connects the blower. I don't have the blower I'm gonna use yet either. It's on the way. This is just a, a test setup. Got quite the monster nozzle in there. And there's a preheat burner inside of there. A Godzilla with preheat, a fairly large one. Now the reason why we're doing this is to use the compressed air as the atomization source. We've all seen the high pressure systems that use high pressure pumps, something like that right there, the Delavan nozzles and all of that and they're very maintenance laden. They require a lot of maintenance. You gotta really clean that oil up good. This right here can darn near eat dirt. You can um, swallow particles as large as three millimeters without any problems. This thing can swallow it all. So you're not gonna have any maintenance issues. And it does have a preheat system on it, but this is actually the airline. People are always telling me to preheat the oil using something like this, and, and you can't do that in practice. We can't pass oil through this and preheat it and run the burner like that. And I'm going to tell you why. This is one of the secrets of these things. Now, you can build one and make a video of it and look cool and show off, but it's not going to be a usable device because two things will happen if you try to preheat oil using the burner's heat. Unless it's done just right, the worst thing that happens is the oil inside of here will boil. And that boiling and the liberation of the trapped gases in that oil, just average air, all that stuff comes out. When it hits this nozzle, it causes a sputtering. When that gas bubble hits this nozzle, there's a fuel void there. A fuel void means an absence of combustion here. And eight times out of ten, you'll suffer a flame out from that boiling oil in this tube. The second reason why you will never see me build a waste oil burner that uses the residual heat of the burner to preheat the oil is because carburization takes place in here and it would foul out quite, quite fast. Maybe four or five uses and you'd have to burn this tube out red hot to get all the gunk out of there. And so that's the other thing. <laughs> so any preheat systems you'll ever see me use will be an electrical system that can be disassembled and cleaned easily. So what we're doing here is preheating the air and it comes back down and sprays that nozzle and it does heat the nozzle up a little bit to about 300 degrees, but it's not bad enough. It's a soft enough heating that it doesn't carburize the oil inside the penstock tube. I don't know if you guys can see that. That tube would get clogged up if we, if we overheated it. So... The game of preheating oil is, is, is a hard challenge. extremely powerful high velocity burner with a dual air setup 
probably achieving performance that was unavailable without this configuration. So, now, that's as far as I can touch the can, which means past that point it's 130 degrees, which means we are getting some pretty good preheat. Too hot in here. All right, it's about 35 degrees outside. The door's open, both vent fans are on, and we still hit 100 degrees in the shop there, so I had to cool us off a bit. We're now gonna try a very high power test run. We're gonna turn everything up all the way. So we're gonna be seeing about, at a maximum, 90,000 watts of power here, because that propane bottle can't do much more than that. We could be around close to 400,000 BTUs. But this thing is screaming. That's a lot more power than you think. So we're burning far more fuel in that little area. There's a thousand watts of blower power going into this, which is incredible that we're still getting this kind of stability. This thing just took all of that air. That's pretty impressive. So it's got some serious stability going on in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to ramp it up to the highest power possible. All right, we let the propane bottle warm up a little bit again here. We're going to hit some serious power this time. It's a little bit more than what we just seen. We definitely topped out what the propane bottle could do. That valve was open all the way. These bottles can't do much more than, I think it's 50 to 90,000 watts of power without doing liquid propane. You can get up to 800,000 BTUs with liquid propane. So. We just turned on the compressed air, so we've got a secondary burn going on. And we're going to crank up the power. And this thing really gets the screen. That's a full-fledged, high-velocity burner. Downright jet engine right there. Um, as I said, I've got both blower fans on and the door wide open. And it's still hitting some serious temperatures in the shop. I do have a carbon monoxide in place for the inevitable release. Look how well this thing's working out. Now, how much preheating power do we have? Well, quite a bit. That's a couple of thousand watts worth of preheat right there, guys. Maybe even a little bit more. The amount of energy needed to Not make that much metal heavy. red hot that thick. Here we are with the waste oil testing. I do not have an ignition port on this thing. I forgot. I just flat out forgot to put one on there. Lighting it from the face ain't gonna do in practice. So when we're out in the field, this thing will have an ignition port. I also wanna be able to look through that ignition port because I have a suspicion that some turbulence is messing with my fuel stream. I don't know for sure yet. Also, the camera's not picking the flame up right, guys. I've got glaring sun just beyond this shaded area right here. The flame's actually a little bit better looking than what you see. It's got a nice prominent inner cone. We were at full fuel right there. Quite a bit of power here. And we are not hooked up to a fuel pump. Tomorrow we're doing fuel pump testing. Today we're just running it on whatever the thing can pump on its own through the siphon action of the nozzle. And it comes out to about five gallons an hour, six gallons an hour almost with that fuel tank just sitting up on top of that garbage can in that bucket right there like you see. So we do have the fuel tank elevated a little bit there and we're putting off some pretty decent power. This right here would melt about 50 pounds of cast iron in 15 minutes based on some of the previous testing that we've done. We're real close to that four gallon per hour mark which is where you need to be. This is a little bit better representation of the flame the camera is, is just getting washed out and it's not giving a good representation of what I'm seeing. I need some better camera equipment. Here we go with the flame on, or the blower on, versus off. So even on waste oil, it's able to take all of that air without blowing out. I can't say that that's optimal having it up that high, but this thing is ready to melt some serious metal. I think it's definitely up to the job. All right, so we are going to be adding an ignition port to this thing. I also want to, because I want to be able to get a good look at this nozzle during operation. I got a feeling there's some bad eddy currents in there that are messing us up. 
So I'm going to have to fix that. We will be seeing more of this burner. I've got some more testing coming up with the pump and I want to see the eddy currents inside of it also. 